I'm Peyton and welcome to Happily Ever Ignash. Today I'm going to be reviewing my second wedding planning binder and explaining the pros and cons about this binder compared to the other one that I already reviewed. Now if you haven't watched that video, you can just click above, I'm not sure which side, but and go back and watch that video first because that one is an amazing wedding planning notebook, a spiral bound notebook that many of you might enjoy but this is the one that I am currently using, so I am gonna review this one too. So this binder is the Miss to Mrs. Kate Spade wedding planning binder, or wedding planner. So there's the little Kate Spade emblem. Now, this does come in different prints. It's not just this particular print. So there are a couple different ones. I got this one off of Amazon, but you can also find it on the Kate Spade New York shop. However, I think most of them were sold out on the Kate Spade New York shop. So you might have to go to Amazon in order to get the ones that you're looking for. It seemed like they had more in stock than online on their shop. The first thing that I want to show you is that it is a binder so it's not a notebook so whenever you open it it's a binder so it says right here so the first page says this book belongs to the future Mrs. and then of course I put Peyton Ignash that will be my future last name then it has this pocket here that um, is a double-sided pocket it's made out of kind of a thicker almost construction paper material and then you have a section here for how it all began now obviously I have not written anything in here and that's mostly because I write a lot and this would definitely not be enough space for me but I thought this was a really cute sentimental part to the binder of just getting you to think like as you're planning your wedding it helps you think about what exactly could we use in our wedding like how did we meet what was our proposal and so on and that could help you plan some of the aspects of your wedding because it is a day about you and your future husband or future wife future partner whoever it is and this could just get you thinking about some ideas it also has a section for the date of the proposal on this side, we have our official celebrations. So this section here, it's got a list for all of the different parties that you might be having, engagement parties, bridal shower, bachelorette parties, bachelor party, um, rehearsal dinner, which that's not quite been decided yet, um, wedding ceremony, wedding reception, wedding ceremony, wedding reception, honeymoon, and then any other celebrations that you might have. So that's a really nice little location there for everything that you have planned. Um, here is your checklist. So this one I liked a lot better because it does have a different timeline. So this one says eight months or more prior. So it's got a lot of information here for eight months, whereas the other one that I was looking at started at 12. So those of you with a shorter timeline, this is gonna be better. Then it has six months prior, and then four months prior, and it also has a notes section for all of these things, but four months prior, which is where we are, two months prior, one month and then two weeks prior so it breaks it down very nicely then you've got one week prior and the day before I really like that it has the day before um, and then of course your special day it doesn't have a checklist for that one but I do like that it has the day before section so those are your checklist pages then you have your budget sheet and as you can see I have not filled this all out and that's mostly because I have it in digital but this is just a very concise budget sheet it includes pretty much everything that you might need which is really nice and I like that 
it's one page. Like it's just concise. It's short, sweet, sweet, simple, to the point, very concise. Then it says, they slipped briskly into intimacy from which they never recovered. F. Scott Fitzgerald. So like all these cute little quotes. So next is the guest list. And for each guest you've got, well, you have the final attendance. You put their names, their address, their email. If the save the date was sent, if their invitation was sent, RSVP, thank you. And then the number of people attending. And it does give you permission at the bottom to photocopy this page if you need more, like more of the pages. So this one has 28 total spots in it already. So if you have more than 28, you'll need to photocopy those pages if you plan on using it that way. Then you have the bridal party section. And again, I have this in other places, so I didn't feel the need to fill this part out. Another quote, the photography checklist, and it's just got classic portraits. Don't forget the top 10 shots you'll be glad you have. So these are 10 shots that you'll want. Any notes of maybe additional photos that you would like. Music, um, this is nice because it does break it down. So it has your ceremony music, your recessional, your who your musician is and their contact information and for the reception your cocktail hour and dinner your dancing music couples first dance uh, bride and father dance groom and mother dance guests first dance cake cutting last dance and then the don't playlist so music you do not want played you have your reception seating so it says, of course, the guests who know each other like to sit together, but we also like to encourage mingling and bringing together people from all parts of your lives. Have fun with it. Who'll have tons of fun talking about it. And then you can photocopy this page also as needed. So it's a nice little short and sweet section here. Um, and then this is the page where you would actually put in your seating diagram. So I don't have that information quite yet. You've got a flowers checklist. So the wedding party, the ceremony, the reception. And then this is a few little like kind of ideas. Why don't you? Unexpected tips and tricks to make your blooms even more beautiful. This is the vows section. I obviously have not written my vows yet, but these are just notes that I have for them so far. And it does give you two pages, which is nice because I write a lot. And then here's where you can put in those like um, vision boards if you wanted to. I might do this just for funsies. Maybe one day I'll sit down with my maid of honor and we can go through and kind of clip some things just to make it fill it up and have this as a sentimental thing. Bridesmaids and groomsmen inspiration, same thing. Hair and makeup inspiration. I do like that they provide two pages for each of these because some of them only give you one page and sometimes that's not enough depending on how much stuff you have. Hair and makeup, I need to look at this very badly. Um, wedding dress and accessories. I already have all my stuff pretty much picked out, so. Flower inspiration, reception inspiration, cake inspiration, menu inspiration. And then this is resources and helpers. So this is kind of cool. Um, so it tells you, it's basically who all of the people are that you're gonna be using. So your florist, your tailor, dress boutique or dressmaker, your makeup artist, your hairstylist, any of their addresses and emails or other roles, people that might be helping you in some other way. So I have to put my cousin on here because she'll be helping out. Um, and then again, a second page of all of this. So if you have several people who are helping out in one way or another, or like even, you know, DJ wasn't listed on here, whoever your coordinator is, that kind of stuff. 
and this page is pretty nifty. So this is the honeymoon information. So it says where to contact us in an emergency. So this is what you would give to a family member or a friend, brides and grooms or whoever, you know, you don't, you try to disconnect as much as possible. So this is, if you couldn't get a hold of the couple while they're on their honeymoon, like this is the information that you could give someone else so that they can get a hold of you if there's a problem. Flight information as well. So I'll probably give this to my mom. This is so cute. This is for a pet sitter. So if you have any pets that you're leaving behind and you have a pet sitter that's going to be taking care of them, you can tell them their meals, treats, medicine, walks, hiding places, allergies, their veterinarian, and any emergency contact information. This is dear neighbor. So this is like for someone who's going to be taking care of your home. So plant care, um, rubbish, or tr this is trash pickup, recycling, where to leave the mail and newspapers, and then if there's an emergency, who to contact. And you can actually, this is all perforated, but you could, you know, you can tear it out, but you could also cut it if you want to, and then give it to these people, which is really cool. And it's a thicker, it's a pretty thick sheet of paper, which is nice. Here's an additional notes section, and I do love that the pages are all, I mean, if you remember from like middle and high school when you picked out the paper that had the extra coating on the inside of the page to keep it protected, that's what all of these have so that the pages don't rip. So here is a notes section, and then there is a pocket here. This is a clear Ziploc pocket, so you could put just whatever in here you could put business cards, um, pamphlets, notes, papers, whatever else in here. Unfortunately, there is no pocket in the back, so that's what this pocket would be for. And then you do still have the front pocket. Now it's time to get into the pros and cons about the Kate Spade Wedding Planner, okay? So first to start out with the pros. It has all of the essentials that you need without being overwhelming or causing too much stress. Some of the other planners that I've looked at or even the other planner that I was using just had so much information I felt overwhelmed. This has the essentials that you need. There may be some other things that you need to add, which is why they have sections for notes and more places for you to add things that you find later you will need. But when you're starting out with your wedding planning, this is the stuff that you really truly need you don't need to know everything at the same time, and that's what I really like about this binder. So the next pro, pro number two, is that the pages in here are pretty thick, and they're all coated with that plastic material on the inside so that they're less likely to tear when you're working with the papers. They're not gonna tear out of the binder. They're very nice, like high-quality paper. And the vision boards especially, these are extremely thick pages. I, like you obviously can't see it in the video, but these are very, very thick pages. These are like a high quality cardstock. The next pro is that the checklist starts at eight months, which I really appreciated because my wedding is, I only had nine months from engagement to the wedding. So I appreciated having a checklist that better fit my timeline. And it even says eight months or more, but at least eight months is when you need to start working on those things, which made me feel a lot better and it made me know that I was not behind in terms of my wedding planning. Pro number four is that the pages are all just clean and kind of minimalistic, if you ask me. They don't have a lot of extra decoration. They're very straightforward. They're very just clean cut. You might say they're a little boring, but to be honest, whenever you're someone like me where I make notes in the sidebars anyways, having a cleaner, more minimal page is ideal because I can use the extra space around the pre-printed text for my own notes and my own information. And they also just look neater overall than having all this extra stuff on them. Pro number five is that because it's a binder, you can add additional pages. All you need is a three hole punch. So if you have more guests than what this allows for, then you just photocopy the list, you put three holes in it, and then you put it in the binder. And I don't know, I mean, I'm a 
I do education, so I of course have three hole punchers like everywhere, but that's really nice. It's not the spiral bound. So if you wanted to add in something, if I wanted to take my receipts, instead of folding them up and putting them in a pocket, I could three hole punch them and put them in the section in the back. Having the ability to add more papers into your binder, I think is really useful as opposed to having other binders or planners where you can't actually add anything of your own. Pro number six is the clear pouch in the back. Now, a lot of times when you're going around and you're doing your bridal planning, you get samples. You might get fabric swatches, you might get um, samples of napkins or dresses or veils or whatever, color swatches, flowers. So this clear pouch, it makes it really easy to collect all of those samples along with any smaller brochures or business cards or any information like that that you might have or even printed receipts like if you go to Michaels or Hobby Lobby and you have a physical printed receipt this is going to be a better safer place to store that than a paper folder will be so the the plastic pouch the Ziploc pouch in the back I thought was a really good idea for a bridal planner and then the last pro that I have for this pro number seven is that I just like the sentimental touches. The fact that it asks you for your story, like how you began as a couple. It asks you what your proposal story is. It asks for the date of the proposal. And then it has little sentimental touches. It has little quotes, little bits of information, some other ideas throughout that are just cute, but it helps you, in my opinion, remember why you're here. And I think sometimes that's really important to help you when planning your wedding. You have to remember the basics of why you're here in the first place. And that's what leads a lot of your wedding planning decisions. So I love the little sentimental bits to the Kate Spade wedding planner. So now moving on to the cons. The first con, and this one is a big one for me. It's a big one for me and I'm sure it's going to be a big one for a lot of my viewers and a lot of brides out there is that there are no dividers in this binder. You have your front pocket and then everything is just pages. There's no dividers in here until you get to the back pocket. So this isn't a big deal. I mean, like I said, it's a binder. So you could go get binder divider tabs if you wanted to. I, pro I know I have some in my garage. I'm in education, I have school supplies everywhere. Um, but you could put your own tabs in. You could also just use sticky notes and put little sticky notes where certain pages are that you need to go back to. That is definitely a con for brides is that there were no original tabs in this binder. So I would recommend probably putting in sticky notes or getting binder tabs, binder dividers. You can get some really cute ones and put them in here that would probably go in with all of this. I'm sure Kate Spade probably even has some binder dividers that you could get. It's just that additional purchase or unless you're like me and you just have random binder dividers laying around all over the house, in which case it's not a big deal. I should probably do that, probably do that today. But that is one con. There's no binder dividers. The second con is that this front pocket is made out of just, I mean, I wouldn't even say it's cardstock. It's just made out of a little bit of a thicker paper. And as you can see, it's already torn. This is the only page in the entire binder that does not have that plastic protective sealant on the binder holes. So this did tear. I'm not sure how or when it tore, but I just have to be really careful about it. I could tape it or I could remove this pocket altogether and add in a different binder pocket, but that is one con as well, that this pocket is not very durable. The next con, con number three, is that if you have more than 28 guests coming to your wedding, which I'm gonna guess that most weddings have more than 28 guests. I would say most weddings probably have 28 people between the couple, the couple getting married, their bridal party, and their family and closest friends is probably more than 28 people. So if you do have more than 28 people on your invite list, you do have to copy 
make photocopies of the guest list if you want them in paper. Now, if you're like me and you keep everything digital and it doesn't really matter if all of your guests are in here in paper, then that's fine. That's your choice. But for some people who like to have everything handwritten out, that could be, that would definitely be a con. There's only 28 spaces without you photocopying and making more pages. And con number four is that there really aren't very many tips or pieces of advice throughout this particular planner. The other planner that I reviewed, again, the link will be in the description, it had a lot of tips and tricks to it that would help you along your planning process or maybe give you some ideas that you may not have had on your own. However, this particular binder does not provide very many tips. It had one in the flower section and maybe one or two others, but not very many tips. Now, for somebody who just knows what they want and you are you don't really need a lot of tips, or if you use Pinterest or other websites or other pieces of information to help you find those tips and tricks, then that's not a big deal at all for the binder to not have it. Actually, it's kind of nice that it's not overwhelmed with all of these pieces of information for you to read while you're trying to plan your wedding. So while it is a con, it's also, it goes back to the pro that I originally said about it not having too many extra things and having very clean and neat pa uh, pieces of paper that you can fill in. So overall, for the Kate Spade Wedding Planner, I had seven pros and four cons. So I really like this binder. I love how it looks. It goes with all of my other wedding planning stuff. I love that I can add things to it and that it's very simple. There are a few things to it that I don't love, but this is the binder that I chose after I had the other planner and I felt overwhelmed. I went to this one because this one fit more of my personality and I was not as overwhelmed by this one. But that doesn't mean that you won't love the first binder. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. I have one more wedding planner not really much of a planner but it's for brides and it came from my Mr. Mrs. box subscription that I will be reviewing again in a couple of weeks so if you're looking forward to more of these videos subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you'll be the first person to know whenever I upload any new videos on Friday you get to see our fun adventures Friday that'll be popping up at 7 o'clock a.m. and I hope you guys have a super awesome day thanks for watching bye